मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू न्यूज एट टेन ऑन राज्य सभा टेलीविजन माय नेम इज ऐश्वर्या कपूर वेल सिचुएशन इन जम्मू कश्मीर इज आउट ऑफ फोकस द होम मिनिस्टर रिव्यू द सिक्योरिटी सिचुएशन इन द स्टेट ऑन संडे वेर पुलिस मैन एंड थ्री मिलिटेंट्स वर केल्ड इन टू सेपरेट इंसिडेंट्स विल गेट यू ऑल द डिटेल्स ऑन दैट एंड मच मोर इन दिस बुलेटिन इन द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर लेट इज बिगिन विद द हेडलाइंस Seven militants and a policeman killed in uh, twin encounters in Jammu and Kashmir. Home Minister asks forces to crack down on instigators as fresh violence leaves 50 people injured in the valley. Supreme Court to hear Karnataka's appeal over release of Kaveri water to Tamil Nadu. Kaveri Supervisory Committee to meet in Delhi to decide on quantum of water to be given. Landmark new Syria ceasefire plan set to be implemented from today. Peace deal brokered between US and Russia after Geneva talks last week. And heartbreak for Djokovic, Swiss star Wawrinka beats him in the final to win his first US Open title. Our top focus is the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. In twin militant encounters, a policeman and seven terrorists were killed in the state on Sunday. The situation remained tense in Srinagar after 50 people were reported to be injured in fresh clashes in the valley. Meanwhile, Jammu and Kashmir a Truck Drivers Association operating in Kashmir, Ladakh, and other parts of the state have decided to observe a complete strike from today after two truck drivers were injured and 17 tankers were damaged in alleged stone pelting attacks by protesters. in Kashmir on Sunday A policeman and three militants were killed in an attack close to an army base in Jammu's Poonch on Sunday Four militants were also eliminated in three separate infiltration bids Havaldar Rajendra Kumar was killed and three militants were gunned down in an encounter between security forces and militants who were holed up in a house near an under construction government building. In a separate incident army foiled an infiltration bid along the line of control in Nogam sector of Kupwara district killing four militants. Infiltration attempts in Tangdhar and Gure sector were also foiled. four weapons were also recovered from the militants this operation ke dauran jo char foreign terrorist infiltration ki koshish kar rahe the un charon ko maar giraya gaya un charon terrorist ke paas se hame bhari matra mein hathiyar ammunition aur explosives iske alawa medicines aur food ki samagri bhi mili hai in charon ko देखते हुए और इनका सामान जो इनके पास से मिला है उससे ये अंदाजा होता है कि वो किसी एक बहुत बड़े ऑपरेशन को सर अंजाम देने वाले थे Home Minister Rajnath Singh directed security forces to crack down on those instigating violence and stone pelting mobs in Kashmir. Chairing a high-level meeting in Delhi, also attended by National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and top security officers, the Home Minister said that normalcy should be brought back within a week in the valley. Meanwhile shutdown called by separatists remained in force in the valley roads remained deserted and heavy security remained in place even after curfew was lifted from many parts at least 50 people were injured in police protesters clashes on sunday in south kashmir's garimabad area 75 people including security officials have been killed and over 6000 injured in the worst unrest in 6 years that began over 2 months ago in jammu and kashmir after the killing of militant burhan wani on 8th of july Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Meanwhile Pakistan's special envoy on Kashmir met UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva and briefed him over the alleged human rights violations in Kashmir by the Indian forces Now Sardar Awais Ahmed Khan Leghari met uh, Prince Zaid uh, Raad Al Hussain as part of Pakistan's efforts to highlight the issue of Kashmir the envoy asked the high commissioner to take concrete measures to immediately end the alleged violence by Indian forces in Kashmir the envoy said that India should fulfill its human rights commitments under the UNSC resolutions and international human rights obligations Leghari is one of the 22 envoys appointed by Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to brief the international community about the situation in Kashmir 
On to some other news. Well, the Supreme Court will today conduct an early hearing on the application filed by the Karnataka seeking a direction to reduce the quantum of water to be released from Kaveri water to Tamil Nadu. Now, Karnataka wants the quantity of water to be reduced from 15,000 cusex to 10,000 cusex. The application has sought that instead of 10 days, the apex court should restrict the release of water to only 6 as the state itself was facing a distressed situation due to a massive agitation. The Kaveri Supervisory Committee, which uh, will meet today, is expected to strictly adhere to the final order of the Kaveri Water Disputes Tribunal while deciding on the quantum of the river's water to be released to Tamil Nadu and other states. Now, Karnataka has requested the centre to send an experts team to inspect realities in Kaveri Basin before the committee passes its order. Now, the committee is headed by Union of Water Resources Secretary Shashi Shekhar, Chief Secretaries of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Caroline Puducherry, besides officials of a Central Water Commission, will attend the meeting of the committee. Well, the Ahmadmi Party on a Sunday unveiled its 31-point Kisan Manifesto with an action plan to prevent farmers and farm labourers' suicides. The manifesto was released by Manifesto Committee Chairman Kamar Sandhu at a party rally in Moga, which was later addressed by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Shriwal. The party, which is eyeing to wrest power in Punjab in the 2017 Assembly polls, also promised to make them debt-free and prosperous by December 2018. Now, AAP announced a compensation of 20,000 rupees per acre for crop loss due to droughts, floods, pest attack or unseasonal rain. In the event of a crop failure, farm labourers shall be given a compensation of 10,000 rupees for every month of loss of work. Now, Kejriwal promised that free medical treatment in government hospitals and uh, cashless uh, treatment of uh, up to 5 lakh rupees per year will be given in private hospitals for every farmer, farm labourer and his family. Meanwhile, opposition criticised the manifesto, describing it as a poor carbon copy. मान लो आपने 100 रुपए कर्जा ले रखा है और उसके ऊपर 100 रुपए आपने ब्याज दे दिया तो आपका कर्जा खत्म और कर्जा देने की जरूरत नहीं है सारा कर्जा खत्म आपको कर्जे से मुक्त घोषित कर दिया जाएगा हम कानून पास करेंगे विधानसभा में जितने बैंकों के लोन हैं छोटे किसानों के बैंकों के लोन और ब्याज सारा माफ कर दिया जाएगा जितने बड़े किसान हैं उनका ब्याज माफ कर दिया जाएगा और दिसंबर 2017 तक पंजाब के सारे किसानों को कर्जे से मुक्ति दिला दी जाएगी दोस्तों देखिए पंजाब का किसान जो पूरे देश का पेट पालता था पंजाब का किसान जो सबसे खुशहाल माना जाता था आज वो कर्जे की दलदल में फंस गया आज खुदकुशियां इतनी ज्यादा हैं कि गिनती उनकी करनी मुश्किल हो गई है और पंजाब का किसान जो है वो खेती छोड़कर लेबर करने पर मजबूर हो चुका है। Meanwhile, in the national capital, the Aam Aadmi Party has been rocked by another controversy. Well, the party rejected the resignation of its MLA, Amintullah Khan, against whom an allegation of a sexual harassment has been filed. Another MLA, Somnath Bharti, has been booked for damaging Ames property. Well, in a press conference, the Delhi uh, Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia defended Okla legislator Khan and rejected his resignation. He said that the sexual harassment charges against Khan are his uh, family matter and is, is being given a political colour. Earlier, Khan had uh, resigned from all party posts and also as the Delhi Vakf Board's uh, chief, claiming that he was being targeted for unearthing corruption in the board. On the other hand, another AAP legislator and former Delhi Law Minister Somnath Bharti landed in trouble as he was booked for damaging Ames property. The Chief Security Officer of Ames gave a written complaint that the MLA provoked a mob to damage the fence of the hospital in order to give access to unauthorized persons inside Ames property and also misbehaved with security personnel on 9th of September. Now, reacting to the regis uh, resignation of uh, the case, uh, Bharti accused Ames of lying. Tifa, स्वीकार नहीं किया जाएगा। ये पार्टी ने निर्णय लिया है क्योंकि किसी भी से भी साजेशन बयान दिलवा दो और किसी से भी इस तरह की वो करा दो तो उससे ये फैक्ट्स नहीं हैं। थाने में कोई बयान आ जाए और अपनी कंप्लेंट दर्ज करो ये कहे कि मेरे पे ये मोर्सेशन करने की कोशिश कर मेरे से मेरे से बदमीजी कर रहे थे मेरे से � 
उनके ऊपर इस तरीके का महिला उत्पीड़न का आरोप लगा है और मैं समझता हूं कि इस पार्टी में तमाम लोग इसी तरह के मोदी की पुलिस बहुत अच्छा काम कर रही है और ये बौखलाहट दिखाती है कि मोदी कर क्या रहे हैं चाहते क्या है और कहा स्टैंड करते हैं आज के तारीख में ऐसे जो हौस खास इसमें सम्मिलित थे और उनके उनका कहने के अनुसार हमने बुधवार को मीटिंग रखी थी Meanwhile, Nepal's Foreign Minister Prakash Sharan Mahat is in India on a three-day visit to prepare the ground for Prime Minister Prachanda's visit this week. Now, Mahat will hold talks with his Indian counterpart Sushma Swaraj today to prepare for the meeting between Prachanda and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Prachanda will embark on a four-day state visit to India from 15th of September at the invitation of Prime Minister Modi. Well, this would be Prachanda's first visit abroad after taking charge of the government last month for the second time. Well ahead of his visit Prachanda has said that he is confident that the visit would not only normalize the relations that went through some bitter experience in the recent past but also build a strong foundation for mutual trust now PTI is a court quoting sources as saying that the two sides will explore new areas of cooperation apart from reviewing status of bilateral ties let's take a look at the news from across the nation in nationwide The government has sought a public view on desirability of simultaneous general and state elections. Is it desirable to hold simultaneous election? Well, this question, along with some other queries related to the issue, have been posted by the government on its website mygov.com to seek the views of all interested people. The last date for submitting the views is 15th of October. With the two more deaths being reported the toll in the, the suspected huge tragedy at Wareli village in Surat has risen to 15 the state government has not officially termed the incident as a huge tragedy and has referred to it as unnatural death the government will bear all the expenses for the treatment of the victims admitted at various uh, hospitals the deaths are attributed to huge are being reported from last week mainly from Wareli village in Palsana taluka The death The death toll in the Bihar floods has touched 228 this even as the flood situation eased with all the major rivers except Punpun Kosi flowing above the danger mark now over 31 lakh people have been affected in 12 districts the government has deployed uh, close to 2600 boats for evacuation while national and state disaster response forces were allegedly working in affected areas And the Chief Justice of India has once again highlighted the issue of vacancies in the judiciary and huge backlog of cases. Now, the Chief Justice of India, T. S. Thakur, said that the process of appointment of judges must be accelerated. The CJI has flagged the issue in his public speeches on many occasions in the recent past. He once again drew attention to the matter while addressing the first uh, state conference of the judicial officers organized by the Chhattisgarh High Court and the State Judiciary Academy in Bilaspur. He said uh, that there are twelve. judges per 10 lakh people in the country and at least three crore cases are pending in the courts he added that as per the law commission's report 1987 40000 judges were needed but even today the strength of judiciary was only 18000 he warned that if the situation did not change the figure of pending cases would cross 5 crore in the next 15 to 20 years and crores of people would be deprived of justice Now let's take a look at the events that are lined up for the day in the day ahead. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan along with his Maharashtra and Jharkhand counterparts will meet BJP Vice President Vinay Sahasrabuddhe to deliberate on the party's Garib Kalyan agenda. The exercise is aimed at setting a new uh, common welfare goals for the BJP rural states and identify schemes that could be given a special trust. The Supreme Court uh, will today hear a plea seeking setting up of a public body independent of the executive and judiciary to ensure fair appointment of judges in high courts in the apex court and check nepotism. The PIL filed by National Lawyers Campaign for Judicial Transparency and Reforms and its office bearers alleged that the common observing lawyers are usually not considered for appointment of judges in the higher judiciary. The 
Sandeep Patil, led national selectors, will meet today to announce the Indian team for the upcoming series against New Zealand. The Board of Control for Cricket in India for the first time will announce the squad for the three-match test series, which starts on 22nd of September. BCCI President Anurag Thakur has confirmed that the new selection panel will be announced through an interview process at the board's AGM on 21st of September. And right now, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. Currency Building Kolkata A 178-year-old structure built in 1833 in the Italianate style with Venetian windows, ornate cast iron gates and railings. The central hall of this building gets light through the sunlight overtoppings in the large domes. This beautiful building was originally the Agra Bank and then it became the Office of Issue and Exchange of Government Paper Currency. It later housed the Reserve Bank of India until 1937. Today, the building is protected by the Archaeological Survey of India. Hello and a warm welcome to It's My Life, the program that brings you face to face with country's top politicians. You know, I've been flying for a very long time. It's a passion of mine. अगर मैं बोलूं मिठाई कराची हलवा कॉमेडी जाने वाकर ये मेरी जो भाभियां हैं ये प्रसन्न रहेंगी तो मुझे ठीक से खिलाएंगी तो इसलिए मैं तो अपनी सारी भाभियों की जमचागिरी करती हूँ मैं तो चला जिधर चले रास्ता You can't be a successful MP without your wife huh? I can't be successful anything without my wife <laughs> Shortcut में सबको खुश करने के लिए चल धन्नो आज तेरी इज्जत का सवाल है when you play golf, you forget about anything. Huh? You forget even your own wife also. <laughs> Most handsome MP in Parliament. Manoj <laughs> Tiwari. Watch It's My Life at Peace Times, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back on to some international news and the landmark new Syrian ceasefire plan agreed upon by the US and Russia is set to be implemented from this evening. The peace deal that was brokered in Geneva by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his US counterpart John Kerry on Saturday will initiate a 48-hour truce which must then hold for the entire week. Well, the truce is uh, to see the nationwide halt of a Syrian government military action against rebels as well as cooperation on strikes against the terrorists. Now, the agreement also envisions a halt to, to offensives by the rebel forces in Syria and their separation from the terrorist groups. Another key element uh, of it is uh, supplying of aid to the civilian population, particularly in the embattled city of Aleppo. However, an escalation of violence was seen hours before the ceasefire came into effect. At least 91 people were killed and scores more wounded in two days of attacks on the rebel-held areas around the country, mainly in Idlib and Aleppo. The rebels also attacked government-held areas, mainly with mortar shells. And North Korea has uh, restated its demand for recognition as a legitimate nuclear armed state. Well, this demand comes as world powers pondered ways to punish Pyongyang for its latest and largest atomic test. The North also vowed to increase its nuclear strike force in quality and in quantity two days after its fifth test, which is uh, being seen as its biggest so far. Now, North Korea insists that its missile and nuclear tests are necessary to counter what it says is a U.S. nuclear threat to its independence. Well, a statement from the foreign ministry in North Korea mocked President Barack Obama for what it calls is a totally bankrupt policy on the country. It says Obama is trying hard to deny the DPRK's strategic position as a legitimate nuclear weapon state, but it is as foolish an act as trying to eclipse the sun with a palm, unquote. Now, Friday's test came only eight months after the previous one and was almost twice as powerful with an estimated 10 kilotons. Now, the cause of worry for the international community is that North Korea has claimed that it has been a miniature warhead that could be mounted 
on the missile. And at least 16 people have been killed and 253 injured after a 5.7 magnitude earthquake struck northwest Tanzania. Now, Bukoba has been the worst hit city with most of the damage occurring there with 840 buildings destroyed. A group of 15 boarders at the boys' secondary school was believed to be among the casualties there. The quake struck in a region near Lake Victoria and on the borders of Uganda and Rwanda, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Its epicenter was 23 kilometers east of the northwestern town of Nasunga in Bukoba district. The main hospital in Bukoba has been stretched to nearly full capacity and had a limited stocks of medicines. No damage was reported in Tanzania's economic capital, which is located some 1,400 kilometers southeast of Bukoba. And China and Russia will hold an eight-day joint naval exercise in the South China Sea starting from today. The naval drills, the first by Russia and China in the South China Sea, will be held off of southern China's Guangdong province. Together, Chinese and Russian participants will undertake defense, rescue and anti-submarine operations in addition to joint island seizing and other activities. The joint drill will be first by any country in the contested waters since an international tribunal rejected Beijing's gains to the resource-rich sea. It also comes close on the heels of Russian President Vladimir Putin's recent move to publicly back China's stand on South China Sea at the G20 summit. Now, China has said that the drills are routine and are not directed at any other country. Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Taiwan and Philippines contest China's claims over the South China Sea. Let's get you some more international news. Here is the world wrap. The death toll in a fire tragedy at a Bangladeshi factory on Sunday climbed to 29 after four more bodies were retrieved from under the debris of the collapsed building. Meanwhile, firefighters continue their search for missing persons in the place that broke out at a packaging factory at an industrial complex in Thongi, north of the capital, Dhaka. About 100 people were in the four-storey building at the time. The blast was likely caused by an explosion in the boiler room. Americans commemorated the 15th anniversary of the 11th of September 2001 attacks on Sunday with US President Barack Obama leading a ceremony at the Pentagon. Obama laid a commemorative wreath outside the Pentagon where a hijacked jet crashed during the string of attacks, killing 184 people. Obama then addressed a gathering of victims and families outside, saying that 3,000 beautiful lives lost that day will never be forgotten. Meanwhile, U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has been treated for pneumonia. Hillary's doctor, Dr. Lisa Bardak, said that she had taken ill at a 9-11 ceremony. Video shows her being supported by aides as they put her into a van after she left the ceremony early. It is not yet clear whether Clinton will stick to her hectic campaign schedule, starting with a series of fundraisers in California on Monday and Tuesday. The French Prime Minister has said that the country's security services are foiling the terror plots and dismantling militant networks every day. Manuel Val said that about 15,000 people were being monitored for radicalization. On a Saturday, a 15-year-old boy was arrested in Paris on suspicion of planning an attack over the weekend. France has been under a state of emergency since Islamic State attacks on Paris in November last year killed 130 people. And our news from the U.S. Open, well, third seed, uh, Stan Wawrinka beat Novak Djokovic to win the U.S. Open title. Well, Switzerland's Wawrinka beat world number one Djokovic to win his first U.S. Open and his uh, third Grand Slam title. The number three seed, uh, Wawrinka, won 6-7, 6-4, 6-5, 6-4.
7-5-6-3 to add the U.S. Open title to his kitty. The 31-year-old Wawrinka is the oldest U.S. Open men's champion since uh, Ken Rosewall in 1970. He was 35. Wawrinka has won only five of the 24 career meetings against the number one Djokovic, uh, but has now beaten the 12-time major champion on the way to each of his own Grand Slam titles, including in 2014 Australian Open quarterfinals and 2015 French Open final. He won 144 points overall to Djokovic's 143. Meanwhile, earlier in the women's final played on Saturday, new world number one, Germany's Angeli Kerber defeated Czech Karolina Pliskova 6-3, 4-6, 4 to lift the US Open title. Well, that's all in this edition of news. Thanks so much for your time.